Alright guys, so this is the second one of these types of videos I'll be doing. The first one was on my Cadillac, which you might have seen already. Congratulations if you made it all the way through. It was almost 50 minutes long. Um, but this one is going to be on my Oldsmobile. And this video is going to be a little, or I'll, I should say a lot less negative toned than the Cadillac one was. Because I don't like the Cadillac, so I didn't have very much good things to say about it. This car, I really love this car. Um, I, I really uh, kind of grew into liking it. I didn't like it a whole lot initially at first when I have, was having a lot of reliability issues. But uh, now that I fixed all that for the last year, it's been a really good car and I haven't had a whole lot to complain about. So uh, I'll um, kind of go in depth here and, and tell you everything I like about it and tell you the few things I don't like about it. You'll have to excuse it. Uh, I put my winter tires on yesterday because it's getting pretty cold and it's actually probably around freezing right now my voice is starting to shake i'm starting to shiver so i'll try and make this a little quick because i don't really want to be out here um but i gotta make do with the little sunlight i have left but i've got my winter tires on it and uh, i've got those stupid plastic hubcaps that everybody made fun of last year but i don't want to put my nice ones on there because i don't want to hit a curb or something and dent a hubcap because i slid on the snow or the ice but I don't want it to be just regular steel wheels under there either because it looks like a piece of shit when it has just regular steels with nothing over it. So I bought some gas station hubcaps to cover it up, but we'll uh, forget about that for the purpose of this video because it doesn't really serve any purpose of this. So this is my 83 Oldsmobile. I started daily driving this um, last winter because my Lincoln was starting to have some problems with starting in the cold, and I figured... Why not drive this old car? Because I drove, before the Lincoln, I drove an 86 Mercury Grand Marquis. And that was actually a very good car for the winter. It handled very well. I was very satisfied with it. So, since this is a uh, similarly priced car, or similarly classed car from the 80s, uh, the Grand Marquis was higher luxury level. It was more like a Buick Park Avenue than an Oldsmobile 98. But the 98 had very, uh, very little differences um, between this and the Park Ave, so uh, I figured it should be around the same performance, you know, being a close competitor. So I bought some winter tires for it and started daily driving it. And ever since I've done that, I've been excited to get in this car and go somewhere. When I have to go to work in the morning, I'm not hating myself that I woke up at 6 in the morning to go to work. I'm glad that I get to drive my car for 20 minutes um, because it's just a nice car. I got a whole lot of nothing to complain about with this car. Um, so number one thing is the styling. This is a timeless style. I mean, call me crazy, but the eighties general motors cars have such a beautiful look to them. I mean, it's just a good looking car. The Caprice in particular, I very much, very like, very much like the uh, late eighties in particular, 87 through 91 Chevy Caprice with those Unilens European styled headlights. I really like those cars. This is not nearly as sexy as those cars. But uh, it is a good-looking car, um, even in the somewhat disrepaired condition that mine is in. Um, it's still a very good-looking car. So I do like that. Um, not a whole lot to tell about the outside of it. Uh, it's got a dent right there, but that's not doesn't affect anything. Um, it's got the coach lights or... Um, uh, some, some people call these B-pillar lights because on Fords, they're right here in Cadillacs. But on the BOP cars, Buick Olds Pontiac, they're on the backs here. Pad vinyl roof. Um, rear defrost. Nothing too special back here, just the back of a car. Fender skirts. I've got those mud flaps on it. Somebody commented on those in a different video I put out um, saying that they were lame or whatever. Um, or they were grandpa mud flaps or something like that. The reason I have those on there, guys, is because I drive this car in the winter. And I do not want my quarter panels and my uh, fenders to rust right there from all the snow and ice and, uh, and uh, salt that gets slinged up. So I put the mud flaps on it. Yeah, they might look a little stupid or whatever. Who cares? They're, pro they're protecting my car. Um, so they're on there. Deal with it. Um, I don't ever even notice them really anymore. Uh... But yeah, this is a 98 Regency. As you can see there, it's not a Regency Brome, and it's not a Regency Brome Elite. The Elite wasn't even available in 83. It was an 84 only. 
Um, somebody commented on a different video asking if it was an Elite. The Elite, what you'd get with an Elite is a fully loaded model. You'd get the Cadillac style fiber optic um, light assemblies on the fenders here. Um, and you'd get uh, cornering lights and leather pillow top seats and uh, um, all this other fancy stuff that, that this car does not have because it was the top of the line fully loaded model, more so than a Brome. And if you're ever confused about how these uh, trim packages work on these cars, what GM did is that they had your three models, especially with the BOP divisions. Your base model, your intermediate model, which with the Oldsmobile was Regency, and your fully loaded model, which was universally known as Brome. And basically what you'd get is if you have a base model car, which is a car that you'd buy probably off the lot, you wouldn't have very many features at all. You might have a vinyl top or... Um, an up-level radio or something like that, two-tone paint, it would still be a base model. But if you had more than, I think it was three or four luxury features within the threshold, you'd get the Regency trim, which was anything that's above base but is not brome. When you got most of the luxury features available, you'd be getting a brome. And for some reason on Oldsmobiles, it would stack. So it's a Regency brome instead of just a 98 brome. So that'd be all, all the luxury features, or at least... A wide variety of them, um, such as leather seats or the top of the line Brome um, crushed Vincenti Velour seats, which are a little bit supposed to be a little bit more supple and comfortable than these seats. But I'm not sure I believe that I'm a sucker for pillow top seats. Um, and uh, you know, leather and cornering lights and uh, and that kind of thing, the, the heavier duty transmission, the diesel uh, V8, most likely. Um, those kinds of things. You'd also get a slightly different grill with those. They, these cars came with three different grill options. You could get this, the egg crate grill, or you could get the wire mesh grill, which is a kind of sparklier one with smaller square holes, or you could get the three-piece. And the three-piece is actually where your header panel here, this part right here, this flat part, would be body color, and it'd be part of the header panel. And then you'd have two inserts of a, of a vertical... Um, or horizontal, sorry, chrome lines, um, kind of a horizontal waterfall lines inserted into both sides of it. Um, and those were on the higher end, top of the line ones. You'd see them a lot in the Bromes. Um, and I actually have one of those front clips off of a parts car um, in, in that building there, just in case I ever got into a front end collision with this and needed to replace it, I'd be replacing it with an actually a higher, higher end front clip um, for the car. But uh, those are the different options you could get for the different trim packages you'd get you would get on these. And this is a base model um, egg crate grill they called it. So not too special there, but it's just something that people knew when they knew Oldsmobiles. If you're an Olds guy in the 1980s, you could tell by looking at the grill of a car basically what trim package it was. The hubcaps too. These are not factory, but these cars came with two different hubcap styles. You could get the smoothie ones, which were just clip-on fully smooth hubcaps with the old logo in the middle or you could get the wire wire wheel locking hubcaps which is a wire wheel hubcap that that had the lock in the middle of it and this car came with the smoothie ones um so it wasn't uh, a brome or anything it didn't have the higher end wheel covers on there but uh but uh yeah so i'll show you here the inside it's got really nice interior illumination which if you watched my Cadillac video you'll see that that car does not this car has an overhead dome light and uh, four dual color these are red and yellow um, uh, courtesy lights on all four doors and the keys and the ignition so it's it's got that buzzer on there so you're gonna have to deal with that but it does have these very nice pillow top seats very cushiony I mean, look at that. You just sink into that. The, the bottoms of them, too. I mean, look at this. This is, that's luxury, okay? I don't care what anybody says. That's what a luxury car should be, a seat that you sink into. And it's got them in the front, too, of course. Split bench, passenger reclining, six-way power seats. You get your tilt, front and rear tilt, um, forward, backward, and up and down. Um, it's got... Your door handles are the body color door handles. That's a was wasn't available on the base model. They were just chrome. Just another thing you might not notice. Here's your 
recline switch. I'm gonna pull the key out here so it stops freaking out on me. Just put that right there. Center armrest, um, it's a, a one-piece center armrest. It's not a two-piece. The Regency Brome Elite would have a two-piece. Um, rear defrost, electronic clock. That's why that delete plate's there because normally you'd have a quartz clock right there. Power windows, power locks. So that's cool. You got your pull strap, very nice pull strap, with your pillow on the on the side of the door. And if you watched my Cadillac video, something I complained about with that was the doors. These open nice and wide. That's a full range door. The Cadillac, that's right there. That's basically all the way wide open doors of the Cadillac. And that's just, as you can see, a comparison, that's just not acceptable. This car, door opens all the way. It's very nice. Don't mind that oil, this car needs an oil change. So, I'll get in here and I'll show you things I like about it. One of the number one things, obviously, first things first, is the seats. I mean, this is just, look at that. It's like sitting on a lazy boy couch. It's very comfortable. You get in these cars, you can't be uncomfortable in these. It's just not possible. Um, it's got a very big, very large glove box. I've got this in here to protect my tapes from sliding all around. Look at this. It goes back to, I've got more tapes back behind these, back in there. This thing holds 16 tapes total, okay? So this is a fully sized glove box, very generously sized. Power trunk release. It should have a light right there, but it was uh, shorted out and it was just on all the time, so I pulled it. It's got your litter compartment down here, as most BOP up-level cars had. Removable. Walk around here, get to the other side so I can show you here. Oh. Okay, so steering wheel is plastic. It's not a leather wrap and it's not a vinyl. Plastic was available on the up level cars because you'd get this chrome ring, this beauty ring around here. Um, this it started to kind of peel off on this side. But that's okay because it kind of the sun kind of hits it in a certain way if you're driving in the opposite direction of a sunset and it reflects off and it kind of hurts your eyes. Um, vinyl was considered base model, but I actually prefer a vinyl wheel over a plastic one because this gets really cold in the wintertime and really hot in the summertime. And eventually, because it's plastic, it will crack and, and break off and become brittle. Um, and vinyl won't do that. Vinyl would just sort of sweat and become sticky. And then you can just put a vinyl wrap cover on it and never worry about it again. Um, and then there's leather wrap, and I don't much care for leather wrap either because all leather wrap is is a plastic steering wheel with a leather wrapped knit uh, cover over it and I don't like the feeling of leather on my hands and it's just hard and there's no give to it and at that point I might as well just have a plastic one so that is it is what it is two spoke steering wheel the spoke is just a directly a horizontal line there's no uh, um, kind of U to them as they are in Pontiacs and uh, Buicks and Chevys um, it's just a horizontal deal and it's all plastic back here too all this is plastic even the fake wood grain plastic steering wheel buttons are plastic or uh, horn buttons are plastic all that um, it's got remote mirrors so you can turn this and turn your mirror and then of course you've got passenger side remote mirror as well which is something that all cars had so that's nice you can adjust your passenger side remote mirror by turning this um, Climate controls, simple design. It is this Tempmatic, which I learned recently that that's an Oldsmobile exclusive automatic climate control system. It's a vacuum controlled system or vacuum operated system, and it's very unreliable. Mine was stuck on full cold all the time. There was nothing you could do about it. And then there was always heat coming out of the floor for some reason. So I actually had to bypass it and get rid of that uh, climate control um, I hate to call it a computer because it's not really a computer at all. It's a vacuum diaphragm with a bunch of different hoses coming out of it and a bunch of convoluted, confusing shit. But I took it out and routed it so it's just set up the way that you'd find it on like a car about 10 years older than this, early 70s. Um, and then because this uh, temperature slider used to be hooked up to a cable that would hook up to the 
vacuum tempmatic control unit and not to the blend door because then the that uh, a different linkage would come off of the control unit and go to the blend door. I got rid of the control unit, so I drilled a hole over here in my dash and put a coat hanger through it and wrapped it in duct tape. And now this is, you push it in, it closes the blend door, which is cold, and you pull it out, opens the blend door, which is hot. That's all it is. Not the fanciest thing in the world, but it was better than a non-functioning tempmatic climate control system. Um, it does have, like as it says, AC, and it does work, by the way. It doesn't work very well. If it's 70 degrees out and you're turning the AC on, yeah, it'll cool you off. If it's 80 degrees out and you're turning the AC on, it's going to blow about room temperature air at you, and it's not really going to do much. So it doesn't work very well, but it, it works better than no AC, so there's that. Adjustable dash vents. You've got this. You can close them and aim them wherever you want. It also goes up and down like this. Oh, fuck. There it goes. Up and down. If I can... Push it back. Thank you. Where I had it. Now I can't get it to go back. There it is. You've got all your dummy lights, which come on in these boxes here. A friend of mine said they actually look a lot like, like on an airplane, an older airplane. Um, let me put the key in here so you can see it. There you go. You get your, oh my lord, battery light, fasten belts, and then you turn the headlights on. You, oops, you got to turn the key get that out turn the headlights on and the, open the door here and there you go lights on other things that would be over here you have check engine light and if it was a diesel you'd have your diesel weight light right here and then um uh coolant level light is over here as well as well as the temperature and then alternator over here and all your different dummy lights are come up in these boxes instead of in your direct viewpoint which is nice um as you can see Illumination, night illumination is fairly good. Um, it's got, so this, I will talk about this now. So since we're on the subject of gauges, it has um, your optional full instrumentation, which is a voltmeter, oil or a te or engine temperature and oil pressure. This is extremely rare um, to have on, an, on any of these cars, not just an Oldsmobile, but any of them. It was only available in Olds and Pontiac. Buick did not offer it. Um, you could get your full instrumentation. And they are kind of an afterthought. They're in bad places. I mean, when you're driving the car, you can't see the temp because the key's in the way. You actually have to lean over to look at it. And then same with the voltmeter over here. The, you can't see it because the tilt lever is in the way. So you have to kind of lean up to look at your volts. But the nice thought is that you know, the idea is that they're there. At least you have them if you wanted to look at them, which it is nice to know what your engine temperature is. So I use them quite frequently. Basic headlight controls, pull out once for parking light, pull out twice for uh, headlights, um, bright controls on a stock, not on the floor. That's nothing really to write home about there. It's just a regular car. Um, I'm very comfortable in this seat. I'm not uncomfortable at all. It doesn't hurt my back. I'm sinking into the seat. I'm liking it. It does have, I put this in here, but it's an up-level, top-of-the-line ETR Symphony Sound Cadillac uh, cassette player um, with digital noise reduction and um, four preset options and your uh, little independent equalizers here, which you have, uh, sorry, the lighting is terrible, but it's getting dark. Bass and treble, individual adjustments on these. Um versus just your tone adjustment you'll get on the lower end radios. I did put that in there. This car originally came with just a, a regular ETR. Let me try to turn the lights on so I can get the camera to focus better. There it goes. It doesn't like it when there's no light. Um, so your this car came with just a regular ETR with no tape or 8-track, um, and it didn't even work. The fuse was blown, so I replaced it with that one. Um, but you could get a wide variety of different radios in these. You could get just an AM, FM analog one or an AM, FM analog with tape, AM, FM analog with 8-track, or you could get these fancier ETRs, electronically tuned receiver, which is a digital antenna instead of an analog one. Um, or you could get that with the tape or with the 8-track. You could get any of them. Um, I believe there was even an AM-only option, but I don't think it came in the 98s. I think that was an 88, Delta 88 car um 
that had that. Each one of these comes with standard with a power antenna. The power antenna is built into the on switch on the radio. When you turn the switch on, the antenna extends, and when you turn it off, the antenna is supposed to go down. But these things are infamous for the motor stripping out and the antenna is getting stuck up. So mine does not work anymore, and I've actually repurposed that harness for my electric choke. So power antenna doesn't work, but it's not the end of the world. I don't really care about it. Um, as you've heard me, as you've now heard, there's not a single thing I have said negatively about this car yet. And all the stuff I've just been reporting is just basic features. Now I'll start to get to the stuff that I really like and the things specific, not specific to the Oldsmobile, but just in general about this platform that will lead me to be buying another one of these when this car finally kicks it. I'll probably end up getting the Buick Park Ave, Cadillac DeVille, or Pontiac Bonneville, or maybe even the Chevy Caprice because they're all on the same platform. And that is so like just the geometry of sitting in here, okay? Perfectly placed armrest. You can put your elbow on this and your hand on the steering wheel and have a little bit of control here. You can put your elbow on this and have your hand on the steering wheel and have a lot of control here. So you can put both your elbows on both the armrests and have both your hands on the wheel at all times and be comfortable without having to crane one hand up here, get tired after doing that for an hour, and then crane this hand up here and get tired after doing that after an hour. You can have both at the same time, which is nice for me. Um, it has these door handles down here. I like the ones down here. I don't like having handles up here. I have to reach up and grab it. There's more leverage when you're down here. You pull it and push the door open, and that is nice. Um, so I like having the door handles down here. I, I think every luxury car should have this because it's just in a better spot. Um, the things I will that I really, really like about this that just are very enjoyable to me is the windshield. It's got a very nice, huge windshield. I mean, it's like a truck. I mean, look at this. I got the phone camera at like a little bit further up than eye level and you can't even see the edges of the frame of the, of the windshield, the whole windshield. Okay. Look at that. It's huge. All right. You got plenty of visibility, even when the sun visor is up. It barely affects anything. It's still got all this nice visibility. It's very nice to drive, um, especially at night because you can see so much. It's not You're not in a little box where you can see. Like when I'm driving this thing, of course, I can see the A-pillar. But when I'm looking ahead, I cannot see the roof line at all. It's just such a nice big windshield. I, I have to say, it's just I really like it. I really enjoy it. Um, I enjoy the way the car sits. Um, it, it's a good ride height. Um, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but just the way that the car is in general is so enjoyable to me. Um, even with this car being an entry level luxury car, it doesn't have air ride suspension. It doesn't even have, uh, um, the Buick's Dyna ride suspension, which was supposed to be more comfortable because they had torsion bars or something. Um, this one doesn't even have that. It's just got coils in the front and rear and it rides very smooth. Um, you wouldn't expect it to ride that, that smooth, especially for being a GM from the eighties. These were kind of known, uh, to be notoriously bad, uh, riders at highway speeds. They had that bit of a death rattle you'd get. Um, and this one doesn't really have that that much. It's still there, but it's not as prevalent as it could be. Um, it's just very great visibility great looks, great comfort. The car sits at a nice ride height. Um, one of the things I, I notice about it, um, after driving, um, the Cadillac or the Mercury, or especially with when I still drove the Lincoln is how well, how good the nighttime visibility is. I mean, I've got a car in front of me right now, so you can't see that, but especially when you turn the brights on, it's just, you can see so much with the car. Um, at night, it's got great nighttime visibility, and these are original headlights in it. They haven't been replaced. They're they're not. They don't say Sylvania Halogen on them. They're um, Delco lights, so they are. They were either replaced back in the day at the dealership within five five or so years of this car being bought, or they're still original. Um, so that is just. It's got great nighttime visibility. It's got a great, nice, big windshield. It handles just the way you'd expect a big car to. It's not too wobbly. It's not too uh, Bodie, it doesn't, you know, you don't get so much, uh, 
body roll that you feel like the car is going to roll over or anything, but you also have just enough give to it, um, just enough dip to it going over a corner that it's controllable. You, it's a very predictable car. I can totally see why the Chevy Caprice was such a popular option for police cars because it's a very predictable car weight-wise, which brings me into my next compliment about it is how well these things handle in the wintertime. I was concerned, okay? I went to bought winter tires for it if I wasn't concerned, I was concerned about how this car would handle in the wintertime um, because it just didn't seem like it was uh, being this old of a car um, and it, it's not nearly as big as the 70s ones were. Um, I was a little concerned that it was going to be a little bit too light on its feet, but this thing is a tank, okay? I don't know if it's because of those winter tires or if it's because of the, the way the car is, but when I put, I throw about 300 pounds of sand in the back and I get those winter tires on there. And the car is better than my mom's Subaru, okay? She'll come home. It's a brand new Subaru, all-wheel drive. She'll come home. Oh, you better be careful if you leave the house. The roads are really bad. And I'll go, I'll be going 70, okay, in a 65, passing everybody. I couldn't do, I couldn't lose traction in this car if I tried to. It is just on rails in the snow. It's insane. Um, And that's one of the number one reasons why I'm choosing a daily drive it even in the wintertime is because it's just, it can't be outperformed by anything. Definitely not that pile in front of me. This car just handles amazing in the inclement weather. And it's just a surprise to me. Um, But I'll definitely be, when I buy another one of these, I'll definitely be driving that in the wintertime too. Um, uh, But yeah, the other things it's got is that you've got uh, reading light, map light, just that little square right there. Um, it's not duals, it's single. You can get dual ones on, think, I think, on the, uh, Regency Brome or the Regency Brome Elite. Um, you could get the dual ones, but this is just a single one. Um, like I said, I mean, you turn your interior lights on and it's just got amazing, um, visibility, uh, in, in, on the inside, you've got your lights up in here, up in the kick panels on, on both sides. You've got your dual color, um, courtesy lights on all four doors and you've got your overhead. And if you wanted even more, you turn the reading light on and you can have that on too. I mean, look at this, this car is lit up like it's daytime in here. It's amazing. It's very well lit, um, in the nighttime, which is just it's just a, a, a thing that makes you feel good about it. If I, like I said, this car, if I'd bought this brand new, I'd be very happy with it. And I would definitely be a repeat customer. Unfortunately, they only made this car for one more year. 84 was the last year for the big body 98s. They went to front wheel drive, fuel injected V6s, um, midsize cars in 85, um, and stayed that way all the way through the rest of the 98, uh, model lines. So, unfortunately, I wouldn't be a buyer for very long, but uh, I would continue to buy the Caprice and probably the Cadillacs until they stopped making them because uh, I very much enjoy this car. It's very nice from a practicality standpoint. Not even, I wouldn't drive this car as a collector's item. Hell no. It's not nice enough to be a car you take to a car show, but it is definitely something that makes a hell of a good daily driver. And like I have said multiple times in this video, I will be buying another one of these um, when this one kicks it. I'll be either getting a Buick, something a little nicer than this, Cadillac DeVille. I don't want the Fleetwood. Um, Fleetwood, in my experience with that one, the Fleetwoods have too much technology in them, even in the 80s. I would get the DeVille or the Buick Roadmaster or quite possibly a Pontiac Parisian or Bonneville if it was old enough. Um... For those of you who don't know, the Bonneville was the same platform as this until 82, and then they went to front-wheel drive on those, but the Parisian stayed rear-wheel drive full-size like this car, um, and it was basically just a Bonneville Brome um, at that point, but it had the Parisian nameplate. And the only reason for that is that the, Pon the Pontiacs are lower end than this, yes. They don't have these nice plastic wood grain... Um, pull handles, metal pull handles with a plastic wood grain on it. They don't have this door padding. They don't have this wood grain on the, on the, uh, um, tops of the door sills. Uh, they don't have this wood grain here. They don't even have the courtesy lights up here. They just have dinky little ones down here on the carpet. Um, they don't have nearly as many luxury features. You couldn't get ETRs on the Pontiacs. Um, but 
the only reason that I would say that comes to my one and only complaint about this car. The climate controls. I briefed up on this earlier with the Tempmatic. This does not have anything to do with Tempmatic. This is any GM upper end car on this platform, except perhaps the Pontiacs. I don't know about the Pontiacs. I can't find any info online about them. Nobody on any forums knows what I'm talking about. But for some reason, GM thought in the 80s that customers did not like, especially since the customer base for these cars were old people with old hands and wrinkly hands and they have to wear lotion and all this stuff. Old people did not like that in the wintertime when they had their heat on, the heat would come from the vents and crack their dry wrinkly hands and chap them because of the high air coming out of the vents. So instead of telling them to suck it up and just close the vent, which is why that's there to do that, they took away the option to have hot air come out of the dash vents. I don't know how it works. I don't know how they did it. I don't know if the duct bypasses the heater core for the dash vents, but when you have this all the way over here on cold and turn the and turn the vent on, even if you're not on AC, it'll blow cold air out there. But if you slide this up to full max heat, no hot air comes out of that. It's all cold, but hot air will come out of the floor and hot air will come out of the dash, but nothing comes out the vent. And that's not because something's broken. The Cadillacs were like that. The Buicks were like that. The Oldsmobiles were like that. All those upper end cars, you could not get hot air out of the dash vents because they didn't design it for that. They made it so you can't because people were complaining about their hands getting chapped. The Pontiacs, I can't find anything if that was like that or not because Pontiacs were considered lower end cars. They were not considered luxury cars, especially not in the 80s. Um, in cars like the Caprice and the old 88 and the Buick LeSabre, you could get hot air out of the dash vents because they weren't considered high-end cars. They were intermediate cars. They were full-size family sedans. This is a full-size family sedan inter, uh, entry-level luxury car. It's a VIN L on the VIN, which is for luxury, class luxury. Um, it is a luxury car, even though it doesn't have many features in today's standards. This was a luxury car back then, and you could not get hot air out the dash vents. Um, but the Pontiacs, being more on the Caprice level and being that the Pontiac uh, Bonneville was kind of a hybrid between a Caprice and a Buick LeSabre or more, more so a LeSabre and a Park Ave because Pontiac did not have a LeSabre old 88 Caprice iteration. It only had the Bonneville, which was a full-size entry-level luxury. So I don't know for sure if you can get hot air out the dash vents on those. But if I find out that you can, I'll probably be looking for one of those because I do like to have hot air on my dash vents. And this being my winter daily, it does get a little old when it's negative 35 out and I'm driving to work and my hands are falling off because they're so cold and I can't get hot air out the dash vents. It sucks. So uh, that's my only complaint that I have about it. Other than that, I, 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 I'll, I'll rave about this car to anybody who asks me about it. If you are willing to accept the responsibility of daily driving an old car, get one of these because it will not disappoint you, especially if you like big cars or if you like old cars. It is just, I've been nothing but overjoyed with this car ever since I fixed it. It had problems. I had the computer command control, uh, computer controlled carburetor quadrajet system with this car. All of them had it. Um, and it's one of the most unreliable pieces of junk systems that I've ever dealt with in a car. I was sticking to it in the early days of these, this channel for about a whole year. I was chasing down problems and fixing them. And every time I'd fix one, it'd run good for about a week. And then something else would go wrong and I had to fix it again. And it was a nightmare. And I was actually almost to the verge of selling this car because it was just becoming a money pit pile of shit. And I, and I couldn't afford to keep fixing it. Um, but then I just decided, you know what? We're going to get rid of it. I got rid of the computer. I bypassed everything. I put a regular carb, a regular distributor, and guess what? Ever since then, I've been very happy with the car, which is one of the reasons why if I buy another one of these cars, it will be a 77 through 79 model before the computer-controlled carb, or it will be a diesel model. And I know those of you who know what an LF9 diesel is are screaming right now, do not buy a diesel. But if you can find one that's been well taken care of or find one that's been rebuilt recently, 
and you take care of it yourself and take certain precautions, they're not as bad as you may have been told they are. Because I know some people who have had them and they're actually not all that bad. You just have to be careful and, and not drive it like an idiot. Don't be hard on it. Don't beat on it. Um, kind of like how I beat this car. So you'd have to just kind of baby it a little bit, um, a little bit more than you would normally a, a regular car. But uh, yeah, this is a lot shorter than my Cadillac video because this car has got less features and I don't like, uh, I don't hate nearly as many things about it. Like I said, the only thing I really don't like is that heat issue with the climate controls. Um, one of the other things I forgot to talk about is how much leg room there is. I mean, I'm a tall guy. That right there, I'm fully stretched out. My leg is straight right now. Um, and that's in the front seat. I have the seat forward too. Look at this. This seat is forward more than that because what I like to do is I like to push my seat forward more and then tilt the recline back or in this case, tilt the seat tilt back so that my back is further away from the steering wheel, but my feet are still up close to the pedals so I can reach them without straining my legs. Um, I don't like to have a seat all the way back. I don't know how people can drive like that. So I actually have a seat forward right now and I can stretch my leg out all the way. So I, it, it's just a nice big car. It's got a nice big windshield. It's got a nice big freaking back seat. You can haul six people in this comfortably and not have a problem. Um, it's got a nice big front seat. You have leg room, hella leg room, abundance of leg room um, to stretch out in. Um, it's a comfortable car. It handles well. There's just nothing I can really say about it that is bad other than the thing with the heat. And if you're buying one that hasn't been converted, you're going to have problems with the carburetor. I guarantee it because there's shit. Um, but uh, yeah. That's that. Um, the, the last thing I'll close out with is I've done a couple of demonstration videos on this, so I'm not going to go up on this too much. But uh, this sound system in this is one of the best I've ever listened to in an old car. Now, I'm not bringing in the standards of new cars where you have booming bass and loud subs and, and uh, amplifiers that you can hear three blocks down the street and uh, shaking the door panels because your car uh, sound system so loud. I'm not talking about that. Old cars with paperback speakers, the sound systems are usually shit, okay? They're very tinny sounding, very thin, rattly noise type deals. Um, and if you have the music turned up too loud, you just get like a muffled static when it gets to the high notes of whatever you're listening to. This has original speakers in it. It has front tweeters that are like two inches wide in the, in the front on both sides of the dash. And then it's got eight inches in the back. It sounds, I mean, they talk about this symphony sound, like it's supposed to sound like you're listening to it in concert. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like you're listening to live music. The bass isn't terrible, but this wasn't meant to be played with a lot of bass. So if you listen to like tapes, like a, I'm a big fan of Stevie Nicks and Fleetwood Mac. Tango in the Night, the album Tango in the Night by Fleetwood Mac sounds like you're listening to it live in theater with this. You can crank it all the way up. The speakers aren't stressed at all. Turn the DNR on so you don't have a static from the tape. Um, and it just, it's crisp. It sounds so good, like crystal clear audio. Um, and I just, I can't be happier with it. Um, it's one of the, actually, it's probably the best sounding antique sound system I've ever listened to in a car. Um, it's not the best sound system, or uh, best sounding sound system because the Cadillac takes a trophy for that, but it is the best old car sound system I've ever listened to. It has, I have no issues with it whatsoever, and I am very glad I haven't, haven't needed to do anything with it to make it up to my liking because I hate working with sound equipment. It's the, the, my night, worst nightmare. So I'll turn that off. And then we'll turn this off. Whoops. There we go. Get out the car here. The sun went down. There's your power seat, six way. And you can't see anything now because the sun's down. But uh, that is the car. And uh, that's a completely honest, unbiased, even though it might seem like I'm biased, if you watch my Cadillac video, I'm a very, very picky person, okay? Very picky. For me to talk about this car that way, it is, uh, it holds a lot of weight. We'll just say it like that. Because with how picky I am, 
to find a car that I actually really like is very, very difficult. Almost everything I'll ever own, I'll have something to complain about about it. But not this. The only thing I really don't like is that climate control. But with all the things I do like, it just gets blown out the water. I mean, that climate control thing is such a non-issue compared to the fact that I just enjoy existing in this car. It's not a problem at all for me to drive this car anywhere. I don't, I look forward to it. It's almost as if it was tailored specifically for me, which makes me believe that if this was still a thing that you could go to the dealerships and order your car, if I had one of these actually tailored for me for exactly what I wanted, I probably wouldn't have uh, done a whole lot more than what this has. I would have done cornering lights. That's one thing I don't, I very much enjoy cornering lights, especially living in the country. Um, in the winter time at night when it's snowing, seeing my driveway is a bit of a struggle sometimes. Um, so I really do appreciate having cornering lights. So I'd probably put those on, but other than that, I don't think I'd have anything else on this car that it doesn't already have. Um, if I could, and that's me saying, if I could order one brand new and pick out all the things I like on the list of thing of uh, of what I want for features, it's already got everything. This is almost the perfect car for me. So, with all that being said, if you like old cars, or let me say it like this, if you're used to driving old cars, big old full-size cars, and you're looking for one that would make a really good daily driver for you, 1983 Oldsmobile 98 Regency. That's what I've got. But, because of the uh, Taco Bell menu nature of these cars, any of the full-size B bodies and C bodies, which is the Caprice 88, 98, Buick LeSabre, Buick Park Avenue, Pontiac Bonneville, Pontiac Parisienne, Cadillac DeVille, and Cadillac Fleetwood. All those cars came on this platform, and you're all going to get relatively similar results with quality on them. So there you go. That's my review on my 1983 Oldsmobile 98 Regency. Hope you enjoyed it. If you made it this far, why don't you go ahead and say it in the comments because you just sat down for 41 minutes and 50 some seconds to listen to me ramble about my car. I'll probably end up doing one on both my other cars, the Mercury and the Citation at some point, but those videos are going to be a little bit less quality because uh, we had two different uh, situations here with this car. We had, or with these cars, we had a car I really love and a car I really don't love. So I had a lot to say about them. But uh, my other cars, uh, I'm not so picky with because I don't use them as daily drivers. So they're not nearly as uh, held to the same cutthroat standard as these ones are. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed and uh, I'll see you in the next one.